All right, Carissa. Hi. Hi, Carissa. Where, where are you from originally? I am from Rialto, the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. And tell me about your, your family. Um, so I grew up with both of my parents. I really came from like a loving home. I, I, I didn't really have a really like traumatic childhood like most girls, you know. Um, both my parents, siblings as well. Um, I feel like the only traumatic thing that ever happened to me while, well, one of the things that's happened to me while I was a child was basically, um, I was six years old and then I was diagnosed with diabetes, type one. So juvenile, di di diabetic, whatever. That happened at six? Mm-hmm. How has that affected your life now? Um, I'm not really on top of my medication like that. So if you're not on top of your medication, you have to go to the hospital a lot. And then you just miss out on like a lot of money being in the hospital. Cause I'll be in the ICU for like three days, four days. Cause I'm sick, but, um, it's gotta be tough with the lifestyle you're leading. Yeah. <laughs> It, it doesn't correlate together. <laughs> they don't go together? No. Sure. <laughs> At all. How, how would you describe your childhood in general? It sounds pretty good, right? Um, it was okay. We grew up, well, I grew up really humble. Um, my parents did the best that they could. I've always had clothes on my back and a roof over my head, food in my stomach. Maybe I didn't get what I wanted all the time. <laughs> But um, they did good. Uh, you're very exotic looking. What, where are your parents from? So my mom is from Nicaragua um, and my dad is from Panama. So you're part? So, okay, so mom, Nicaraguan, dad, Panamanian. Uh, my Nana is from Jamaica. So I'm basically Hispanic and black. There you go. How far did you go to school? I graduated high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what led you to the streets doing this kind of work? It always starts with that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> it always starts with that one guy. Did you start out as a boyfriend? Um, kind of. He was interested in me. And I guess his friend was the one that told him, hey, like you should like pimp on her, w w whatever. Oh yeah, bro. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I was the one or whatever. How, how do you make that jump from being a, a teen? You were a teenager. Yeah, I was seventeen. Seventeen. How do you, how do you make the transition from a seventeen-year-old girl who probably has, you know, would like to have a boyfriend to getting into a situation where you're turning dates? and bringing him the money, I assume? You know what, I was never really good with guys. <laughs> like, at all. I've, I've always had bad luck with men and relationships and stuff. Um, so just, I feel like having somebody who I guess truly cares about you and about your safety and, you know, like cares about you and stuff, but you're paying them I guess, whatever. It just, it, it felt good at the moment. How long did that last? Um, um, honestly, I, I don't, like a couple months. Oh, no, not long. Yeah, a couple months or whatever. And then I left and then um, I went into college for about a year. And it was, it was getting too much. For one, I didn't have no like FAFSA, no scholarships or nothing like that. So I was the one like paying out of pocket for everything. So it just, it was just a lot. And you're 23 now. Mm -hmm. you have, do you have a pimp now? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. It's a better situation than the yeah, first Yeah, way, way better. He actually cares. So, so there are some relationships with pimps yeah of course that are that are beneficial not yeah i mean i don't know much about other people's you know folks and pimps or whatever the, whatever 
but um my relationship with my folks like it's it's really amazing i i love it you you still give him the money but he mm -hmm. what does he do in return um so okay so for one my folks he knows how to save as a female <laughs> especially me because i like to you know buy everything and anything but um he knows how to save he knows how to invest in the proper things um when i've been with him i've never had certain things so an apartment a car i've no like he he really helped me a lot so you you, you now have an apartment and a car mm -hmm. you do i think what a lot of people don't understand about girls that do this kind of work is I would guess close to 90, 95% of the girls are terrible with handling money. <laughs> like I un like un unbelievably bad with it. Mm -hmm. And that that's where a good pimp can come in and, and manage your money. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people, a lot of squares or a lot of like normal normies, you know, they don't understand we're like damn like why would you sell your body and give it to a whole other guy you know why would you but first of all like that's just how the game goes i feel like you 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 can't disrespect the game i personally wouldn't okay so i've been on both sides of the fence so i've been a square going to college nine to five going to college i've been a renegade and then I've had folks. So the reason okay. why I'm with my folks right now, for one, safety, by all means. If I need him, if I really, really need him, I can call him and he'll be there like that. But college wasn't safe? College was safe, I guess. But it's just like, I just couldn't do it. It's, it's the I, another part of the puzzle here that mystifies people that don't understand is long-term gratification is a foreign language to you guys. <laughs> you guys don't understand that. Like college is about long-term gratification. You, 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 you put in the four years and then you might get a better job at the end of it. And you know what's crazy? My sister, she's the first graduate of like a college and stuff. So and your like, family. yeah, yeah so so. She, she, she did it. She did it. But, but <laughs> most, most of the girls that are doing this kind of work are like, I just need that money for tonight. I'm going to spend every dime of it. And then tomorrow I'll do it again. It's all about short-term gratification. And sometimes you don't even get anything. One night you can make a hundred dollars. Not me, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm fine. but, um, there's days where you don't make anything like, and there's days where you make times more than what you thought you were going to make. What? What's your ideal kind of customer? Customer? Cl uh, Clientele? Tr trick. Client job, trick, whatever. whatever. <laughs> There's so many terms. <laughs> um, Hispanic men. A lot of Hispanic men. A lot of Hispanic men. Um, some whites. It depends if they're not like the police. <laughs> yeah. Some whites. Um, black men. Um, you have to be like really older, like you're about to croak old <laughs> for me to date you and you're black. Because otherwise they're what, hustlers? They're either trying to rob you, rape you, or pimp you out. Mm. Yeah, I've got, I was just being thirsty and the night was being slow and stuff. And I had dated, um, you know, blacks that ended up either robbing me raping me i've had um one that kidnapped me before but yeah yeah all the girls have those stories sad but your current folks are african-american hmm? the, the current my folks yeah yeah he's african-american mm -hmm. and is it, is it a romantic relationship for you as well no he's not my boyfriend he's not no. and there are other girls in his camp yeah i have a wifey yeah she's great too it's not nothing like no like boyfriend girlfriend it's not like a jealousy type of situation it's just we're all here trying to just get out the game trying to be better than we are today and yesterday so 
do you recall your very first time doing this? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was this, um, I think he was like white or something. I don't, I don't know. He was like white. It was an out call because at that moment, I, don't, I wasn't sure why, but the person that I was paying at that time, he never wanted to get rooms. I don't know. I'm like, okay, whatever. It was an out call up in Hollywood. I come, um, go to, I, I think it was like a, ho a hotel or something like that. I, I honestly forgot. But I go and I had came inside. And at first, like, I, like I was scared because it was like my first time. It was this older, like, white guy. I'm like, ew, like... I don't want to do this. This is so disgusting. Um, but he had ended up giving me, I think it was like three fifty for like ten minutes. So then I was just like, I'm on top of the world. Oh my god. It wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like. It was weird, you know, because it was like my first time. But then I'm like, damn, like if I can make. 350 in 10 minutes, I could for sure do this. Is it, is it just a matter of getting over the, no pun intended, hump of, of having sex with strangers? Getting that hurdle out the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're having sex with people that are not age appropriate, I assume. And yeah. Probably have bad hygiene. Yeah, no. One thing about me, um, I won't date you if you stink. <laughs> <laughs> I will not date you if you smell. I don't smell, so why do you smell? And I've been outside. Oh, I just came from work. Well, baby, you need to go take a shower or something because I'm not going to date you. But if you come into my room and you smell, for one, I'm going to still keep my money. You can, you know, go take a shower and stuff. And that's just how it is. It's got to be a hard life. Sometimes it is. Sometimes. Because you're not attracted to these guys, right? I don't know. If you're attracted to a trick, you are green. You are a, you're, you're super green. Or you're on crystal meth. Something. <laughs> are, are drugs a part of your life? No, I don't even smoke weed. You don't even smoke weed? No, I don't smoke weed. Um, I drink alcohol, but not while I'm working. I like, no, I can't. So you I can't work do sober. that. Yeah. Wow. Super sober. <laughs> Good for you. You ever get arrested or hassled by the cops? Yeah. Got arrested. Oh, sorry. I got arrested um, a couple times. The cops generally leave you guys alone, though. Mostly, you, like... You outnumber them <laughs> by a lot. Mostly. I know Vice, like, they know me. They, they know my face. They'll be like, oh, miss, last name. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Go. I'm like, you know I'm not. <laughs> How does doing this work affect you emotionally? Um, you get numb to it. Mm. Yeah. You get numb to it. You get used to it. There, there's times where um, I'm just sad. I'm just super, super sad. And it's only because, like, it's not going as fast as I like it to. You want to make quick money. Yeah. There's there's times where you'll stand outside for hours and not make nothing. If you, if you could do four dates an hour, you'd be happy. Something. Like, <laughs> at, like, just fast dates. Fast dates are, like, the best. When those are, like, your, like your fast days, you think, oh, okay, like, it's going to be like this every single day. No, it's not. And it's crazy because there's so many people like, oh, you're so pretty. Like you must catch so many dates and this and that and that. No, there's days where like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just, it's so irritating. And I just want to like, just be in my bed and go yeah, to sleep. And so sometimes when I'm driving down on fig, I'll see some of the most beautiful females that ever Walk the planet. There's right? a lot of girls. Super, girls some there. super attractive women mm -hmm. who are standing out there, and I'm like, so I'll, I'll drive around the block, come back later, and she's still there. 
Yeah. And then she's still there an hour. I can't figure it out because yeah. there's, there's certainly enough guys cruising up and down the street. Yeah. It's I crazy. I, I, I don't. People don't understand that um, just because you're pretty doesn't mean anything. Literally, it does not mean anything. A lot of tricks, a lot of johns, they're attracted to body type, you know? So you could have a pretty face with no body, for one. And most johns, most tricks, like, they're not going to date you. Because pretty faces don't mean nothing. Yeah, there's, there's all shapes and sizes out there. Shapes, sizes, and your mouthpiece, too, for sure. Did you have dreams of doing something else with your life other than this? Yeah. Um, I want to go back to school. I really want to go back to school. Yeah, well, you're young enough to do that. I know. <laughs> and so you have an apartment. Mm -hmm. You have a car. You have a pretty good setup. Yep, I do. Would you describe yourself as happy? Um, I feel like that's probably not the word. I mean, am I a happy person? Yeah. You seem to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am a happy but you, person. But you realize that there's a better life out there for you? Not a better life, but better, I don't know, like opportunities, I guess you, you can say. But I know, like, I'm going to make it out this game for sure. I'm not going to be 30 plus in this game. It's not me. Have you been in love before? Hmm? Have you been in love before? Mm. I don't think so. If it takes that long to answer, the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're young. You're young. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, I had a baby. I was in love with my baby. Of course. Are you raising your child? Um, I actually, I was pregnant for about like six and a half months and then oh. I had a stillbirth. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. It's okay. What's the hardest part of this lifestyle for you? Mm. Being safe, for sure. Being safe. Yeah. Especially in a, a, down in South Central. Yeah. It's crazy out there. I don't want. I've, I've had so many things happen to me. I'm, I'm surprised I'm still here. Yeah, there's girls that have died. Yeah, there's this girl. Um, I think you interviewed her, Essence. Yeah, Essence and Butter both passed away. Who? Butter was another one. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Both, both in the last year. It's crazy because I had seen her. Um, her murder. Yeah. That's it's, it's sad and it's just crazy. I've had, I've seen girls get um, ran over. This girl, um, she got killed maybe like two weeks ago on a, on a 83rd. Um, and it was this trick who ended up like getting out the car and like beating literally the life out of her. This is somebody other than Essence. Essence was shot. Yeah, she was shot. Yeah, it happens so often that you would think a lot of girls would just say that, not for me. I've been there. I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this. But it's the lifestyle. It's it's the money. How do you think working the streets has changed you? I'm more tough. <laughs> Yeah, you get streetwise and tough. For sure. I'm more street smart and I'm more tough. I don't take shit. Do you see men differently because of this? Yeah. <laughs> how, how, is Heck it, yes. how, how has it changed how you see men? <laughs> men are fucking horny. Like, men are disgusting. Men are gross. Men are so horny. But honestly, they pay. <laughs> Men are just weird. <laughs> they have weird like requests at times. It's so weird. Oh yeah, I've heard about some of those. <laughs> what, what 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 requests have you had? Um, twist their nipples. Um, 
when I was in Kansas City, I had this regular who, like, I wouldn't even have sex with him. I wouldn't do anything, like, sexual that's in my eyes. But with him, like, he would have, like, a toolbox with, like, tweezers and, uh, and, and like, tasers and the electrical thing that, like, hooks onto his nipples. And, like, I'll just, like, basically, like, torture him, I guess. And then call him, like, my little bitch and shit like that. And, like, he'll nut. But he would pay me like six hundred dollars. Yeah, that I've had this other guy who um, basically wanted me to like fuck him with a dildo. But that was in Vegas, so I broke on him. For sure, broke on him. I'm not gonna fuck you with a dildo for two hundred, five hundred dollars. No, he was white too. It's always the white ones. Yeah. The white guys are weird. <laughs> white guys are kind of weird. Yeah. I think, I think they're, they're all weird at all. <laughs> Everyone's weird. All flavors. <laughs> Do you have any regrets in your life yet? <laughs> yet. Um, yeah, a couple. They're really... Um, it's like sad. <laughs> Like my grandma had um, passed away in December and um, everyone was calling me, but I was ignoring everyone. I didn't know she passed away until like two weeks later. And um, I was actually trapping out of town and I was like ignoring everyone. Yeah. It's harsh. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's alright. Yeah, it's hard. She was um she was like my best friend. We were both named the same, both born in the same month. Literally like I was her twin. So yeah, it was it's it's been hard. And then I went like on a binge. <laughs> Of like Hennessy, <laughs> and I was just drunk all the time. That that was probably like the only time where I would work and I'll be drunk, cause I was just hurt. Yeah, but alcohol is generally not a problem for you. Mm -mm. It's good. It can't be because it raises my blood oh, sugar. Blood sugar. <laughs> it's great that you're staying away from drugs because mm -hmm. once, once the addiction, drug addiction happens, it's going to be so much harder for a girl to get out of it. You lose yourself for sure. Like I've seen girls. Literally, like, pretty as me, making money and stuff. And they either choose up with a pimp and he does it. So he, like, introduces her to it. Or, like, she just had, like, a rough night. And she's like, let me just take the edge off. Or, you know, and you just get lost. You just get lost and you're literally, like, just lost in the game. Yeah, because you, you could easily get out of this lifestyle and, and change your whole life direction. Exactly. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a different mindset. But not with drugs. Not with drugs, no. No. Even like a heavy, like alcoholic drinker, alcohol drinker, alcoholic. <laughs> that, yeah, no, it's sad. And what hours will you typically work? Um, I work all hours. So yes, the day before yesterday, I was up 24 hours. Really? Yeah. How do you do that? Without drugs? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> right. Coffee and water and Red Bull. Red Bull, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Figaro Street's an interesting street. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like... It depends, like, where you are, though, for sure. Like, I, I feel like the 60s, I don't like playing there. There's a bunch of pimps. Yeah, a lot of pimps there. There's a bunch of pimps. He's driving around and just... Mm, I'm good off if there. If it wasn't for the pimps... I believe figure out because the cops are not really the problem. Yeah, they the, the pimps are the problem. They've told us plenty of times, like, we don't care about you guys. We just want to get these pimps out and like we're trying to find guys with guns and Yeah, but I, but I've thought about this a lot. Sometimes you'll drive down Figaro Street and it's like a fashion show. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Of, of it's it's better than going to a strip club because these, <laughs> these girls are beautiful 
and they come in all shapes and sizes and colors and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it wasn't for the pimp, pimps, you'd, you'd have five times as many women out there. For sure. And right now you already have like 100 girls between six. Standing in like one street, it's like 20 girls. Between 64th and, and Century, you've got, or 105th, you've got. Yeah. Easily. Literally. Easily. 100 girls, more than that. Literally more than 100 girls for sure, from like the 60s up to like the 100s. But you imagine if there were no pimps. Way more. You'd have 400 girls out there. <laughs> Way more. I know girls don't come out at a certain time and they don't play certain places because they know, okay, like pimps be there. Yeah. So. No, the pimps have ruined it. Yeah. Some yeah. pimps. What's Some that? pimps. Some pimps, yeah. Some pimps for sure. People love to hate pimps. <laughs> They're the most hated segment. <laughs> the pedophiles and the and the uh, pimps are the most hated two segments in society. But I will say that there are some. I, I get I get a lot of crap for this, but there are some pimps that are actually helping their girls. My you, folks. What, what people don't understand, I think, is that there are a lot of like, white people, middle class people, upper class, don't understand that in the hood there aren't a whole lot of options. Even though you went to college, you you still probably relate to the situation you're in and given once you're in that situation the, the i feel like no one is in the right place to judge criticize anybody i could be the most successful person i like all this stuff but you will not understand what it takes to be a three or four, what it takes to be a pimp, what it takes to like really be out there if you've never been out here. So it just really upsets me how people perceive us as these bad people, as these drug addicts, as this, as that, but you've never really like, even really sat down and talked to a person that's in this lifestyle. You've never been in this lifestyle. So who are you to judge? Yeah, I think what a lot of people also don't understand is, I mean, you, you, you might be the exception. I think you are, but mm -hmm. you have an education, you have a good childhood, all that. But a lot of people don't understand that a lot of these people, the pimps and the girls, are dealing with lack of opportunity, exactly. drug addiction, traumatic childhoods, mental illness. There's females out here who've been raped at six, five, seven years old, and it's a traumatic experience like it really really is you're you're a kid you're a kid and you've got raped and you don't think that's going to take a toll it does you're around um drug addicts you don't have any family people beat on you i mean me like i've i've uh i've been in a domestic violence like relationship bad Bad, bad, bad. I was um, I was pregnant at the time, and um, I was pregnant at, at the time, and it was the day before my birthday. And I had just got my hair done. I had just bought like new chains and stuff. He literally beat the life out of me. He snatched all my chains off. Um, I had to go to the hospital because I had a fractured rib while I was pregnant. Mm. Yeah. I suck. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a terrible lifestyle. I mean, one of, one of the girls I just interviewed recently calls me and, so, and says uh, she just got gang raped by four, four, four gang members or whatever they were. They, they... That's another thing too. I see girls out like, and this is especially like in the 60s. I don't know why, but this is like what a lot of girls do. like. There'll be four men in the car or three men in the car and they all want to date. So she gets in the car. I would never do that. That's what happened to her. Yeah. And, no. she, and afterwards, she couldn't even work because she was so beaten up. Yeah, I would. Uh, so I helped her with the room. But that's just. It's that's sad. Just, that's reason to quit right there. There's a lot of reasons to quit. And that's really one of them. Yeah. It's 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 just just it's just sad. It's a sad lifestyle at times. At times there it's it's the best. You know, like there's days where you make four hundred, five hundred dollars. There's days where you make two thousand. So there's is ups and downs, but I, 
honestly, what keeps me motivated is my mentality, the way I am, and my folks. I have a great relationship with him. So with me being so self-motivated, and on top of that, I have him, it's just, it, it's good. It's really good. So before um, I had came here, like here, um, I was on a, I was in the 80s and I have my back turned and I'm on my phone and I hear a car like coming and stop. So I'm like, what the heck? So then as soon as I turn around, all I hear is they hit me with a whole BB gun multiple times, multiple times. And I started crying my eyes out because it hurt. Like I started crying my eyes out and um, they hit me like about like 20 times in like my side right here and then like my back. They hit me once here, but I turned around like fast and I was wearing heels so I can't run or else like I'll fall and they're still gonna like shoot me with the BB gun. But then um, I was just, I was so over it and I was gonna go inside. And then thankfully I got an interview <laughs> with I you guys. From, from the streets for a bit. Yeah, it's tiring, tired. I've been up since like 8 p.m. yesterday. You've been up since 8 p.m. And, and you, what time is it now? Like It's uh, 11 a.m. Yeah, I've been up since 8 p.m. And still, I'm going to still be up. <laughs> You're going to work again mm -hmm. after this? Mm -hmm. By choice or you kind of have to? Nothing's by force. Nah, nothing's by force. How, how many days a week do you work? Seven. So you don't take days off? No, I take breaks, like, <laughs> in, in between my day and stuff. But there's no days off by choice though mm. honestly there's a lot of pimps out there that it's by force but when it's slow days like this you got a gorilla hoe <laughs> <laughs> you really have to gorilla hoe and really like you're gonna date me <laughs> so is is robbing the trick part of the I, I suspect it is. Every, it's just a lot of girls don't admit. Every it. prostitute, and if you don't, every prostitute has robbed a trick before. Every prostitute. Tell me your best story. Okay. Um, it was this out of towner. Um, he was where was he from? New York, Brooklyn, and um, he had ended up first paying me like. 150 but what tricks don't understand is if you pull out a stack of money and you think i'm not gonna ask you for more or you think i'm not gonna rob you because i'm a sweet girl and all this like you have something coming because i'm here for the money literally i'm not here to 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 fall in love, I'm no, I'm here because you're paying me, you're paying for a time. I'm a great time, I'm really loving, I'm really caring, I'm, I'm really, really sweet. I'm not like most females who wanna rush you and who are, you know, really like mean and really rude because at the end of the day, you're paying me. So we're gonna have a good time for the time that you pay. There's this trick, he ended up paying me $150, but he pulled out a stack of money I'm like, you're not going to just pay me $150. I'm going to break on you. So he ended up paying me another $150. And while I was doing what I was doing, he had ended up putting the stack in his pockets, but on the floor. So I did what I did. And he was closing his eyes. I'm like, yeah, baby, just close your eyes. Relax. Calm down. I... I'm going to take care of you. Doing what I'm doing, I reach down and I'm trying to find like where it's at. I could feel it with my foot. I could feel it with my foot. So I grab my foot and I like pull it way closer to me. So I grab my hand. I ended up just grabbing the stack. And I'm not going to say where I hit it, but I hit it good. <laughs> I had good. <laughs> and then he ended up walking me to the door. 
He's like, okay, babe, like, it was great seeing you. I'm like, yes, babe. And what'd you get away with? <laughs> it was like six bands. Wow. And he didn't even nut. <laughs> I promise you he didn't even nut. It was just like, because he was but, but that's, a prick. But that's, that's what the game really is. Yeah. A lot you, of girls won't say that. When they say they get beaten up by a trick, what they're not telling you is that they're doing something like that. And then the guy rolls down fig and finds them three weeks. Late. Exactly. And I'm not going to give out too much free game out there, but don't do it. And you know, he lives out here. Be smart. Be smart. Like, no, just. But, that, but that's what the game is really about. You have to have a mouthpiece for sure. You need, you need to have a mouthpiece. You need to be laced properly. You need to have game and not be scared because scare money doesn't make no money. So. Carissa, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Okay. Um, just to be safe. In your 23 years. Literally, just to be safe, especially doing this as a female. You know, just be safe. Be mindful and be aware of, like, your surroundings for sure. Um, don't trust people. Literally, do not trust people. And if you have someone that you can trust, like, hold on to them because that's rare. Um as a prostitute, as a 304, all your HPs and your homegirls and all this stuff, like take it to a certain extent. Cause you literally never know. People can literally turn around and stab you in the back for the littlest things ever. And just, you know, have fun too. Don't be so addicted to this that you lose yourself. So I've been there. Yeah, just be safe. That's it. All right. Carissa, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Be careful out there. I will. Thank you.